In this video, we'll be talking about how to customize your products in Flexim. In a previous video, we talked about customizing Flexim objects, such as machines and transporters. But in this one, we'll be focusing mostly on the products or the flow items, which are the items that flow through your simulation. So here are the ways of customizing your product we'll be talking about today. First, setting the shape at the object creation, changing the size and color during simulation, then changing the shape during simulation, and then how to combine, assemble, or join products together, or separate, split, cut products into separate products. Then importing custom shapes in FlexSim, and then creating custom shapes in another software. So let's start with setting the shape at creation. So when we create a model in FlexSim, the default flow item is a brown box. Very, very exciting. So, and I know this is starting with very basic, but it'll quickly get more advanced. So if you want to change that, you go in what's called the flow item bin, and then you can choose from a bunch of standard objects. So a box, cylinder, sphere, pallet, toad, man, woman. So that's, for example, if you were simulating a process where people are walking through a hospital, for example, or airport customs, things like that, then the flow item would be a person and not an object. These are just a sample, but the idea is that you can change them as you want. So the first thing you want to do, let's say the box, you don't like its size. Its current size is written here. That's in the model units, which by default are meters. So the box right now is 0 0.61 0 .0 by 0 0.61 by 0 0.3 meters. So we can change that either by entering numbers in here. Let's say I wanted, I wanted to make it perfectly perfect box. I could do that or you can just uh, drag and drag it like this to, to change it. So once you've changed it, you come here and then it's it's a different shape. Of course, you could also change the color. Right now it's brown, so let's say I don't like that. I want it to be yellow. So when I restart run, it's a yellow box. So very, very easy. I know I know this is way too simple, but we'll, uh, we'll change that later. So one trick, uh, that's important is that we usually don't modify it's, it's a good practice not to modify the box itself because right now if I want to start over and have a and use a box in that particular model it's lost because I modified it so what we try to do usually is you copy the object so it, now it created another item called box copy and then you can change its its name my product and now you change it to whatever you want and you make it different so if you want to get back to the original box well it's still there and what you have to do here is choose in the source which product you want to create so right now it's the box but you would have to go down the list to my product and choose my product so it does the same thing it just I wanted to show better way to do it to avoid some confusion later on so that's it we've worked on setting the shape at creation now, what if we want to change the size and color during simulation? So, let's say once the product is done, here I want it to change color. So, very simple, we'll go into the processor and the triggers. And they let, then let's say it trigger on process finish, or it could be trigger on exit, but it seems more logical to use on process finish. And then in the visual properties, and then we can say, okay, when the product finishes, We'll set object color. Now it's at random, but I want a very specific color. So when it's done, let's put it green. So if I run it, once it's finished, it becomes green. So one way to modify. Here I changed the color, but I could instead or also change the size. So. If I look in the options and the trigger on process finish, I have also the option to set the size of the object. I'm just going to let the defaults here. So now it's going to do two things. It's going to change its shape and change its color when it ends. So you can see that this is pretty useful. You can, you can visually see a product evolving uh, along the line, although it's still just a box. So let's look at that. Let's look at changing the shape during simulation. 
we weren't very far in the menu. If I come back to here in, in the on process finish, let me just erase those uh, triggers and start from scratch. On process finish, if I look at the options in the visuals, there's one that's called Shage 3D Shape. So if I look at that, I have the list of objects. Actually, I have more than, than what I had in the flow item bin. I have components of the trucks. Actually, these are all the objects that are in the Flexim uh, folder. So I could choose a simple one like the cylinder or the sphere. So let, let's take the sphere, which is one of the uh, items in the flow item bin. So now it's changing to a sphere. Problem is, it's keeping the same proportion. So the sphere with these XYZ dimensions looks like this. So if you also want to make it the perfect sphere, you have to not just to change the shape, but also to change its size. And again, I'll leave the default and we'll see what it does. So we've seen how to change the shape during simulation. I'll, I'll come back to this later once we import custom shapes later on in step five. Now we're going to talk about combining parts together and separating parts. So in order to combine, assemble or join, we use what's called a combiner. And the combiner has three modes. One of them is to pack things, join things or batch things. So let's look at join first. So I have two sources which create two different products. Whenever a product comes in here, it's a box. It's combined with a cylinder and the output is a box. So how did I do that? Is here the first connection that's made to the combiner, which is this one here, is always what's gonna be coming out at the other end. So in this case, it's the box. And then I specify how many of whatever else I connect after that goes into it. So in this case, so the second port was the, the cylinder. I said, I, I only want one. So what the combiner does, is he accepts the container from the first port and then he accepts one of the other and then he spends this process time of 10 seconds and then he outputs one product which is the original box so not very sexy but the principle is there if you want to combine things or assemble things that's that's the way it goes if we want to split items then it's the opposite we use a separator here we specify there's either split or unpack. So if we are we have a product that we want to cut into multiple parts, like a sheet of wood or a metal bar or things like that, it's split, of course. But if we receive a pallet of product from somewhere else and we need to remove the boxes, then we're going to use unpack. So let's use split. And how many in how many parts do we want to split it? So we just specify, let's split in two. And now the box coming and when it comes out at the other end there'll be two of it so it's just multiplying it uh, it's not really cutting it to size if we want to show that the size changed again we would use a trigger on exit here to adjust the size of the product to show that it was one product that was cut into many products and by the way the unpack is really useful but we have to have things packed before so you can't unpack something that's not been packed before. So if I try to unpack the box, it's just gonna stop there, it doesn't work. So normally, if we are receiving products from another factory or supplier, you know, on the sidelines, you create pallets of product, which you would receive into your model, and then you would unpack them. So that's what it looks like for combine and separate. In the next section, we talk about importing custom shapes into Flexim. To do so, Let's start with importing custom shapes into the flow item bin, into our products. So if I start from the flow item bin, I duplicate the box to create another one, which I call my product. And then all I have to do is click on the on the 3D image and, and see that its file is called box.3ds. That, that's the file format that is used right now to define that shape, that object. So I just go browse 
And on my computer I have a folder of shapes that I've used over the years or that I found interesting. So let me just, well, this one here, wheelbarrow. So now my product is a wheelbarrow. If I change that, I just have to come here, change my product, and then it becomes a wheelbarrow. As simple as that. And we could also have done it somewhere, anywhere in our process using the same method we learned earlier, which is, let's say, uh, on, uh, on entry or on exit or on process finish or on whatever, visual change 3D shape. And here I go in the list and I choose what I just created or imported. By default, it's usually the last one at the bottom. So that's that would be that, that the same effect of changing a product somewhere along your line into something else. And but again, with the same considerations that we talked earlier about earlier about the size. If if you're changing one shape from to the other, you also have to change the size if you want it to be the right size. But when you import it in the flow item bin, it's automatically the size it's supposed to be. And then when you run the model, it'll, it'll be that proper size. So you saw when I, I was choosing the 3D file, there was a big list. And if you want to view that list better, you go into view media files here, and it lists all the 3D files that are currently into Flexim. So you have the standard flow items, Plus you have some parts for people or for trucks or for objects, conveyors and sh all types of shapes. So basically everything that you have in the library is, is made up of these parts here. And what I just added at the bottom is my wheelbarrow.skp. So I, I can see it here because we couldn't really see it well in the menu earlier. What type of files can we import? If we look at the manual, Flexim manual, in the section about creating and importing custom 3D objects, it gives you some important information. For example, it's better to import smaller, simpler files than huge, complex 3D shapes. Especially if it's a flow item that's going to flow through your model, it's going to make the simulation much slower. If it's just one machine that acts as a prop, maybe it's not too bad to, be, to import a big object, but Usually we try to make them small. I'll show you how later in a few minutes. So these are all the valid 3D file formats that you can import in Flexim. These are tested and work well all the time, like the standard 3DS, WRL, STP, SKP. And uh, these can work, but sometimes they don't necessarily work as well right off the bat, or sometimes they don't work or you, you have to play with the dimensions and things like that to make them work. Uh, next, where do I create 3D shapes, like the wheelbarrow, or, or where do I get it? So I usually go first on 3D Warehouse, which is a SketchUp uh, free uh, repository of shapes. So let's say I wanna press, drill. So I'll, I'll find, find all types of press drills that I can download. Uh, usually I choose the SketchUp file format and then import them in Flexim. Of course, you have to be careful of what you want to do with it or and is it is it shareware? Is it what's the licensing on these parts on these products? But I usually find interesting things in here that I can use in my models. And if I don't, then I go into SketchUp, which is again uh, free software where you can create objects in 3D fairly easily, extrude them, uh, then make another inside, extrude it. So it's just a quick example. So let's say this is my part. I can import that into Flexim. And it's very light, very small shapes that are easy to use in simulation. So that's it about importing 3D shapes. And I also covered creating shapes in another software at the same time. To learn more about customizing in Flexim, I recommend you watch another video I made which is called Levels of Customization in Flexim. I'll put the link in the description below. For those who don't know me, my name is Patrick. I'm an industrial engineer and simulation consultant based in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. And I spend my life doing Flexim models, so if you need help on a project, contact me.